What about making your sound better? What is up guys, my name is Alan Tukmar Chef and today we're going to be looking at mastering. Now mastering is kind of a huge topic and I can't really cover it all in one video, but I'm going to try my best to like cover the basics of mastering and uh, I'm sure some of the tips I'm going to give today will definitely help you out in your next uh, project. So what is mastering in general? First of all, mastering is a music production process where you have to kind of, um, you know, make the track a little bit louder. You have to cut with frequencies, you know, like, so for example, there's too much high end, you can, you know, reduce that. There's not enough bass, you can increase that. In mastering, you also, you know, make the track sound a bit more wider, a bit more full. Um, you know, if, for example, if the track is clipping in mastering, you can fix that. And uh, mastering in general is like a final process, you know, so for example, you make the track and the way you would finish your track is by doing mastering at the end and then only clicking render and publishing it somewhere, you know. So mastering is the final step in your track before you hit render, of course. Now for mastering, I usually use third party plugins such as Isotope. Um, I use MGUS compressor. Um, you know, sometimes I even use the IVGI compressor as well. Um, use some transient shapers and stuff like that. So for mastering, I don't really use the native built in plugins in FL Studio. But since I want to make this video kind of available to every single one of you, uh, I'm going to be using only the built in plugins in FL Studio. And I'm also going to be using W Productions uh, transient shaper as well. So over here, I have this kind of really interesting beat and this is totally unmastered. It's well mixed, but there's no mastering applied to it. So it sounds really quiet really empty and uh, not much life into it really so check it out as, as you can see the beat is really dull really empty and with mastering we can improve the beat so let me show you what you can do to make it sound better so we're going to be starting off with the limiter and once you just apply it, it doesn't really do anything, it's just kind of quiet still. And also when you're mastering, don't forget to have it on the master channel as well, duh. And also actually before we get into this, um, a lot of producers and others like to do their mastering um, in the same project file as everything, you know, where in this case we just rendered out the whole uh, wave file and now we're doing mastering in a separate project file. Now you can do both ways, but I found that doing it this way where you just have the wave file right there is much better. First of all, you're getting the maximum quality audio from here because you rendered it out and you're not really distracted by anything else. You, know, you don't really have anything to play around with. So the only thing left to do is do mastering. And I don't know, I just kind of enjoy doing mastering in this type of way much more than just doing it in a project file, for example. And same thing kind of applies to vocals. You know, when I have some sort of vocals on top, I always render out my track and then add vocals on top of the track in a separate project file. So that's kind of a little bit about my workflow, I guess. But anyway, we've got the limiter here. Now, how can we make the track sound a bit louder, but not too compressed or distorted? Well, there's a really magical button here called the gain button. Check out what happens when I just raise it up a bit. Now, this is a perfect example of over compression. As you can see, it sounds loud, but it's so muddy. Like all of the sounds are like glued together. So never over compress your tracks. With this game, which is going to go up a little bit, just making the track stand out a bit more. So. So I did plus 5 dB over here just to make it sound a bit more louder and as you can see with the limiter nothing's distorting it just sounds a bit louder you know. So the next plugin we're going to be using is actually also a built-in plugin and that is the Maximus. 
Now again, same thing with the limiter, um, the maximums plug, once you just apply it, nothing really happens. Now, why do we need maximus? Now use maximus for a whole complete different reason. Limiter is just to make the track louder. Now maximus is to make the track sound more full. Now let me show you what I mean by that. In maximus, you have a really fun option over here in the band section. As you can see, it kind of layers down the track into three bands, like in a queue. So you have the low end, the mid end, and the high end. And here you can kind of adjust these things. So for example, if I want more bass, I can just raise this up, you know? If I want less bass, I can raise it down. So let me give you a little preview of this. So for example, in this case, I want to raise up the bass a bit. So I'm going to increase it, maybe lower down this over here. mastering we kind of want to go back and forth where you switch from uh, headphones to speakers all the time right now this sounds good but probably if I play it on some nice quality speakers it's gonna sound too bassy so usually when I do the rough mastering with my headphones I switch to speakers and then I do kind of almost the final version of mastering then I switch back to headphones again listen to that and see how that sounds you know and sometimes I'll go back and forth multiple times until I'm happy with the result and then of course comes in the thing where I kind of play my track on different systems and see how that sounds like. And then I go back into the mastering session and I adjust it accordingly. So it sounds somewhat decent in uh, different uh, music systems. And this is the section that I was talking about. We're gonna make the track sound really spread out. So for example, what we can do is we can just go to the high end here and we're going to make it sound a bit more wider. So Maximus has this interesting option called stereo separation and you can really separate your bands. So check this out. Notice when I turn it to the left, the high end sounds more wider. When I turn it to the right, it kind of sits in the background there, you know what I mean? So in this case, I kind of want to spread it out a bit. So I'm going to uh, put the knob to the left side like this. Not too much though. Okay, I'm quite happy with that. And same thing with the mid and the low. So we can go to the mid, which is this, of course. And we can, for example, try to revive this down. and the bass. We can even do the master channel, so where it's gonna affect everything, you know, not only the separate bands. That's pretty much it with Maximus. And now I'm gonna try two more plugins and that is going to be the EQ. And we're also going to be using W Productions Transient. So let's check out the EQ first. Now you'd normally use the EQ 30 to 18 Hertz cut, or just cut out the highs a bit and the lows a bit to just make it sound a bit more clear, I guess. That's pretty much it. And now we can add in our final plugin and that's gonna be transient. 
And with this, this plugin is really awesome. Not gonna lie, I really like this plugin. I normally use this for mastering purposes and I also use this for vocals. Now this transient plugin really kind of helps out uh, in vocals a lot because it makes vocals kind of sit in the mix, if you know what I mean. So for example, if your vocals are too separate from the instrumental, you can use the input and the out knobs to make them kind of fit in, you know what I mean? So I've, I use transient all the time in my tracks, especially when I have some vocals on top of it. But this is also really great for mastering purposes. So let me show you. So what you can do is you can make the track sound even louder without distorting or clipping it. So check it out. That's pretty much it. So let me kind of give you a preview of the before and after, and you'll see a huge, huge difference in the two. Limiter to increase the volume, Maximus to make it sound wide, EQ to make it sound cleaner, and Transient to make it sound a bit louder without distorting or clipping it. So that's kind of the process of mastering a track in FL Studio just by using stock plugins. Now, this is kind of a really rough mastering uh, session here, but uh, normally if I would actually master a track and you know release it somewhere and do something with the track, I would spend a lot more time mastering this thing. Uh, sometimes it, it takes like hours to just you know get the perfect mastering thing going on but yeah guys hope you enjoyed the tutorial bear in mind that this was just rough one so don't really judge it that much but yeah that's kind of the basis of mastering so hope you enjoyed this video and see you in the next one guys peace